Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch, our show following all the news and the goings-ons with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. I'm Damon Hadfield, and as always, I am joined by Jonathan Dornbush, host of IGN's PlayStation Podcast, Podcast Beyond. Beyond. Hey, Damon. And Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox Podcast, Podcast Unlocked. I'd like to congratulate Jonathan on the long-awaited conclusion of God of War Watch. It's finally, the watch has like, finally ended. What did I do? I, <laughs> I was very concerned for a second, but no, I know we celebrated quite a bit on Beyond this week. It's uh, our, our watch has ended. It's Christmas is saved. Thank you to Sony Santa <laughs> Monica. Looking forward to that. There's still time. It could be delayed again. <laughs> Don't you, Damon. Stop it. <laughs> no, I'm, I kid. I kid. We did finally get a release date for God of War Ragnarok. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but first, we begin this episode with Ubisoft, which we just found out recently they're going to have a, uh, a new sh- big showcase in September. That is September 10th when that's coming up. So time to discuss what big next-gen games Ubisoft might have in store for us. And I think a pretty safe bet is the next Assassin's Creed, codenamed Assassin's Creed Infinite uh, or Infinity. That's what it is. Remains to be seen whether or not that will actually be the, uh, the, the official title of the game. But this one's not coming this year. This one is the... Coming for next year, the sort of game as a service, Assassin's Creed as a service that's supposed to connect all the different time periods that Assassin's Creed has visited over the years. Ryan, what's, you know, Ubisoft said recently at the, I think the 15th anniversary celebration of Assassin's Creed that they'll have more news in September. Yeah. So surely Assassin's Creed wouldn't, wouldn't be skipping this showcase, right? No, I, I think based on what you said and, and the fact that they are holding a showcase at all uh, it points to a new Assassin's Creed announcement. It's I, I wouldn't get my hopes up too high for in terms of amount they'll show. I think we should set our expectations at CG teaser, maybe just a logo. If we get any more than that, great. Um, as you said, they might talk a little bit about sort of the structure of the game and how it's going to be a little different than previous games in the franchise. But now, this is a, a series, Damon, that has reinvented itself a couple times over mm-hmm. the years, and maybe it's about to do so again. And, and I'm kind of curious to see the, the exact direction they're going to take it. Yeah, Jonathan, what do you think about this this new direction for Assassin's Creed? It's already kind of a game as a service. The, the last few um, entries, you know, Valhalla is a year and a half old now and is still getting new content. What do you think about this idea of, of an Assassin's Creed that's sort of connect all of these different time periods? Um, You know, I mean, I certainly think it works within the context of the way they have extrapolated the Assassin's Creed universe, especially since the the beginning of it. Um, All of that sort of time shifting, timey wimey stuff, it makes sense to kind of just go all in on it and really bridge it all together. Uh, But I think more than anything, it kind of just fits the trend of of Ubisoft games we see, you know, for better or worse, depending on what type of player you are, that to put things as longer standing projects, you know, Ubisoft seems to have really kind of gone all in on mo- mostly not not all in all cases but mostly focusing on games that can exist for a longer amount of time mm-hmm. um and certainly whether by accident or not you know the the last couple of assassin's creeds as you said in particular valhalla has had a much longer tail than than past games especially when it was yearly um you know i certainly kind of miss those days of, of somewhat smaller somewhat more contained mm-hmm. and focused assassin's creed and that you know i wouldn't Mind if there's a future where we can still get that? Maybe it's in the context of this game. Maybe there will be, you know, essentially uh, campaigns introduced into this sort of ongoing game that we can enjoy. But I I sort of miss that uh, flavor of Assassin's Creed and would like a little bit of it back. But that said, you know, like obviously they they must see something in the way that there have been these longer tales on the last couple games. You know, they as recently as in the last couple weeks, I think, put out a patch for Assassin's Creed Odyssey uh and and origins has gotten a revival as well a little bit so clearly they know people are digging back into the last few games in total um so yeah i i think it totally makes sense for what ubisoft does but i think it will very much be a player by player basis of if that's what you want from assassin's Mm -hmm. creed yeah i i consider myself a fan of assassin's creed particularly black flag origins and odyssey so very interested to see what they have uh in store for assassin's creed (laughs) At this showcase in September, another one I think that is highly likely to make an appearance is Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, which is supposed to be out this holiday season, alongside the new film, the sequel to Avatar. Uh, Ryan, this one is a next-gen only game. Ubisoft has confirmed this for next-gen only. 
Yeah, and the, that Unveil trailer, if that's gameplay, it looks visually incredible, uh, mm-hmm. which I guess a, a video game based on Avatar should, because that's one of the big selling points of Avatar the movie is how incredible it looks from a visual perspective. So, yeah, I, I mean... It stands to be a massive game for them. Uh, no pun intended. That's the name of the developer. I actually totally didn't mean to do that. But <laughs> it's it really actually could be a hugely successful game for them this fall, uh, particularly with no Assassin's Creed in there this fall. There, there's not that right. uh, otherwise huge AAA pillar for them to rely on for Q4. But um, yeah, I, I'm just really interested to find out what it is. I mean, it's, it's a first person game uh, that automatically has me intrigued. So I, I remain optimistic and I remain curious. And, and I think that's I think you're right, Damon. It's it's probably the safest bet, probably even a safer bet than Assassin's Creed oh, wow. for this September showcase. This is the game you can pretty much bank on seeing. Yeah, we had an, an interview with the the technical director of programming on Avatar, Nikolai Stefanov. This is from last year where he was sort of explaining why they've decided to make this next gen only. And he said, new consoles allow us to have much better object detail up close to you, but also when you're flying high up in the air, to have a lovely vista and far distance rendering where we can even use the ray tracing to do shadows super far away, you know, three or four kilometers away from you. So that sounds very cool. We know it's a first person action adventure game. Ubisoft has one of those called Far Cry. Jonathan, do you think do you expect this to be like a Far Cry like with the with the you know av- Avatar license and universe? I mean, there's certainly yeah potential for that. I think, especially uh, given Far Cry's uh, you know at it at its best, I think for a lot of people is when you get to explore these beautiful lush environments, and certainly Pandora is a world built to be that type of environment. Um, so I I hope you know they've they've learned a lot from those blueprints, obviously. Uh, Massive has a, a lot of history building very intricate and dense uh, spaces as well, uh, more city-based ones with the Division franchise. So it'll be interesting to see them move to a more natural uh, world. But, you know, this is the game that apparently got Massive the Star Wars game as well. Disney, we, we had the report a, a while back that Disney was so impressed by the work they were doing, and that led to the Star Wars partnership as well. So this must be, there must be something really, really exciting brewing, at least from, from that sort of end of what they're doing with the property. And yeah, as far as we know, it is still set for a 2022 launch. So potentially you, we got to see the game at some point if they want us to buy it. So, yeah. And this this isn't the first time that Ubisoft has made a first person action adventure game based on a major, major film license. You may remember King Kong, the movie, the game, which was actually really good. It was fun and a great way yeah. to get achievements. I mean, yes, yeah. <laughs> Ubisoft has made an avatar game in the past, right? Yeah, there was a third person action game, I believe it was. Around the original movie. Yeah. And Jonathan, since you mentioned uh, Ubisoft's Star Wars game, that's something you know we don't know anything about other than that it's something that is being worked on. Uh, that's something that I would like to see. What, do you, what, what sort of your, 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 your gut tell you? Any chance they'll give us like a, even a, a little teaser of what a Ubisoft Star Wars game is going to be like? I would love it. I think at best we get maybe a title reveal. Um, I do believe the Ubisoft forward is happening around the same time as D23 this year. And so that's, Mm. you know, great Disney synergy. That is a thing they certainly love. Uh, So I wouldn't be shocked, you know, if we maybe get a little bit of a tease. But with us just needing to see what Avatar is as a game, uh, with that potentially being released this fall or early next year is something they really need to put a lot of marketing behind. I don't think they want to put too much of a spotlight on that future project, and it's also probably in a much earlier, you know, pre-production state. Sure. So I, I don't think they'd want to want to reveal too much. But I, w- I would love at least to know what the game is or to know kind of when it's set. Uh, yeah, any sort of vague detail I'll take. I, I would also guess that that Disney's going to want to keep the focus for gamers on Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which is the next mm-hmm. big Star Wars game out and. That's so I, I, I would just throw that on the pile as well for reasons for sure. we probably won't see massive Star Wars project at this yep. showcase. Yeah, that's a good point. OK, another Ubisoft game that's been a long time coming is Skull and Bones. And apparently, against all odds, it's actually going to come out maybe later this year. But that November one, 8th. Yes, we've yep. got a date, Damon. We have a date now. OK, yeah. I mean, I, I, if you would ask me even a couple of months ago, I would have said, no, that game's never coming out. But that one is getting its own gameplay re-reveal tomorrow, the day after we record this, which is the day before you, the dear viewer, will be watching this. So probably shouldn't spend too much time on that. Any, any sort it's of next uh, gen only, though. We, that was a little bit of a surprise after how long it's been in development. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. 
But speaking of games that have been in development for a very long time, there is Beyond Good and Evil 2, which just today Ubisoft reaffirmed what they say exactly. It's um, still in active development. This is a game that was, uh, I think it's been five years now since it was sort of unveiled at E3. Ryan, what do you think? Beyond Good and Evil 2 in September? (laughs) Michelle Ansel retired. Uh, That's not to say that someone else hasn't picked up the mantle. It's not that I don't believe Ubisoft when they say they're still actively working on it, but it's it can't be the highest priority at that company right now when you've got Avatar and you've got Star Wars and you've got Assassin's Creed. Uh, it's I kind of just wonder where it fits in and and how long are they going to work on it? I mean, I want to see it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this is a, a, a follow up to a beloved game from the PS2 original Xbox era. I'd love to see it, but uh, until there's like a real, like not even a CG, an actual gameplay demonstration, mm-hmm. I'm going to have a hard time believing that that game's ever coming out. Yeah, yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. It seems like it's a little bit confusing even to what direction they were taking it, because I think it was also supposed to be some kind of a live service game. Originally, it was going to use a lot of user generated content. Oh, yeah, uh, I forgot about that. I, I don't know. It's I, I, It's strange to me to think that if it's an active development, there are people going to work every day working on Beyond Good and Evil 2. I don't know. Jonathan, what do you think? I mean, I think them saying that does mean there are people doing that every day. To what extent <laughs> it is up for debate, but I think they could have probably let it lie if it wasn't. I I think that game will eventually exist and come out probably in a very different form from what we saw in those earlier days, at least in terms of scope or the focus or that user generated content and all of that. But I don't think it is anytime soon. Um, so I, I would be surprised to see it here because I think, you know, obviously we're talking about a lot of the games that we haven't heard from in a little while, but this is also a showcase where it is going to be right before a uh, skull and bones. It is going to be right before Mario and Rabbids. Like we're probably going to see mm-hmm. some of the other games that are already dated here. That's a lot to cram into one thing. And I think a game that is probably a little bit further out, uh, most likely won't be there. Could be wrong yeah. though. Ryan, I'm going to wager a guess that the Ubisoft game you're most looking forward to is the Splinter Cell remake. <laughs> <laughs> you would be correct, my friend. Yes, I have uh, the the last Splinter Cell game is on the monitor behind me. Cool. That game turns nine years old next month, Damon. Oh it has been just about nine years. I reviewed it for IGN uh, the first year I worked at IGN, two thousand wow. or well, I guess second year, second year, two thousand thirteen, uh, August two thousand thirteen. It just it was at the very tail end of the three hundred and sixty generation. It was an excellent Splinter Cell game. Uh, did a good job of kind of blending the conviction formula and the yeah. classic stealth focus formula. Didn't have Michael Ironside, which I never mm-hmm. sat right with me, but Ironside has since come back and played Sam Fisher in Ghost Recon DLC. Ubisoft continues to tease us with, with Splinter Cell things, and they did confirm that, yes, they are making a, a full ground-up remake of the original Splinter Cell, but uh, based on the the wording of that announcement, it sounded like they literally just announced that they're doing it. Yeah. They're still hiring. So yeah, I think even a, even a simple teaser, you know, just logo with the three green lights and the goggles, it's probably even too early for that. Uh, And that's okay. I mean, I just, I want it to, I don't want them to really show me that game until they're ready. I'm glad to know it, it it exists and it's happening. Uh, But yeah, I, I think that one's probably a long shot for this September showcase. The other remake that Ubisoft has coming is the Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake and is yet another game from Ubisoft that is having sort of a long, uh, a long gestating, a troubled development period. Jonathan, what, what, any chance Ubisoft will want to sort of re-reveal that game in September? I, I think it depends on how well the production is going. You know, I think it was earlier this year that we heard that uh, production had been shifted from the teams that were working on it to Montreal, I believe. And, uh, you know, it depends, I think, how much work they are carrying over and then how much they're doing on top of that since they're now leading the development. So if it's, you know, if it's a very much sort of like word one re overhaul of kind of the work that had been done, I don't think we'd see anything this September. Um, you know, they're not even targeting the fiscal year release that they were originally uh, fiscal year 23, I think, for them. So it's probably a ways off and there's probably a significant chunk of work that needs to be done. So this September right now, especially with that move only having been a few months ago, I'd, I'd be pretty surprised to see it. 
It's got to visually look good whenever they show it, though. Like oh, their yeah. their their next time we see that game is crucial for for the sort of fan sentiment for it because it didn't look good when they unveiled it. We were like, uh, yeah. "This is a remake, not a remaster." Yeah. So yeah, I I it's it's a layup, right? If they in terms of like we know the game is great, right. so hopefully the tech uh, will will hold up its end of the bargain once Montreal is finally done with it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a preview of a few games you might see at the Ubisoft Showcase. Again, that's coming September 10th. You'll be able to catch the showcase and all of our post-show coverage right here on IGN. Looking a little bit further down the line, a little bit later into 2022, we do now have the release date for God of War Ragnarok. And it is November 9th, which is a Wednesday, and two days before 11-11-22. So I'm a little puzzled (laughs) why... I, I, why, why not just put it out on Friday, 11, 11, 22? I don't know. Jonathan, what, what, what do you think the idea behind that is? Uh, probably other than not wanting to deal with the back and forth between PlayStation and Xbox sort of uh, yeah. egging on that that might cause. Um, I believe when it's Odin's Day is is Wednesday is uh, okay. how November 9th is Odin's Day. I think okay. the Santa Monica Studios account tweeted about that. Okay. So not a coincidence there. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that's probably the closest thing to a, a reason for that date over anything, uh, since they've been, they've been sticking to Friday release dates for the most part. Mm-hmm. Well, in any case, it's good to finally have a release date. That's kind yes. of like our big, our big first party fall game this year, right? Of course. It's an awesome way to mark the 18th anniversary of Halo 2's release. I approve. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> November 9th, 2004, baby. Oh my gosh. Wow. It was a great day. <laughs> It was a great day. Um, of course, the PlayStation Lords giveth, they also taketh away. And Forspoken PS5 exclusive has now been delayed into January. It's supposed to be out in October. And now that's what, January 24th, Jonathan? I believe it's the 24th. Yes. Yeah. Um, Ryan, so. I, well, oh, I was just going to say, Ryan had, had a good theory that. Uh, well, it was shot down by somebody that would know. So, I, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, was, you know, it, it looks like you, you might think just as a as an observer of the industry, well, okay, Sony's got uh, the last of us remake in September. They've got, they've got, of course, God of War Ragnarok in November. Well, it's because the, the way, the way it was worded, right. Damon is what you're alluding to is they, yeah. the, the, the tweet that the forspoken account put up was like something along the lines of after discussions with our partners, which made right. it sound like, Oh, okay, well you talk to Sony and Sony's already got two big first party games and, probably wanted to kick you guys to Q1 where maybe Sony doesn't have mm-hmm. as much exclusive content. But uh, I was, I was kindly informed by somebody that would know that that's not how it works. So I, I'm still kind of puzzled at, at why the first spoken account, why they worded it that way about, I totally like, okay. agree. but it's, it's seemingly not like a, a whole thing of like shuffling the deck to, you know, stay out of first party's way or anything like that. But in any case, it's uh, something we got another cool next gen game to look forward to in January now, right? Alongside uh, the Dead Space remake. Alongside too. the Dead Space remake. That's right. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Ryan. The wording was strange. It was like, after, you know, the game is content complete. It's just being polished up. But after discussions with our partners, we've made the dis- the strategic decision to move it to January. So I don't know. It's a it's a little strange. Maybe there's something being lost in translation from you know it being a Japanese developer at all. But Jonathan, I guess this gives Sony and Square Enix a little bit more time to try and get people excited about Forspoken. I mean, it certainly gives them a chance to let it have a spotlight, too. You know, I mean, like to Ryan's point, I I don't think it's necessarily a like because it would be in first party's way. I think it's just sort of the like, what's the best case scenario for a brand new IP? That's a, a, a console exclusive. That's a good point. And you have a much better chance of launching something like that in January than you do in the middle of October. Um, you know, it's. It, its original release date would have been around a lot of existing franchises and other big games. And that's not great, especially as you're saying, for a game that has kind of had a bumpy promotional cycle so far. I think if they want this to be a series, and it seems like they do, if they want this to be a world they can revisit, giving it its own time, giving it a a time of year when people are looking for new things, I think January is a pretty good time for either like a series that's kind of been dormant or a brand new series and, and Forspoken speaks to that it's a much better time for that. And, and when it comes to the 
key strategies with partners and, and Square. Square has at least four or five other games planned for this fall already. Uh, both some exclusive to PlayStation, like Valkyrie Elysium, and then many more third-party uh, multi-platform as well. Uh, and then, you know, between that, between Sony having two first-party games in the fall, which is pretty rare for them, uh, having them also putting marketing money behind Avatar and Hogwarts, which are both potentially supposed to come out this fall as well, that's not really the best time to launch what is supposed to be a new attempt at a universe for, for either of them. So I think it... I think it is the best chance scenario for them. And they can then also, as you were saying, let people get excited, hopefully with a like very polished, uh, maybe at some point in the future, a hands-on opportunity for the press or some sort of demo they can put out around the holidays, you know, something to, I think, really let people get a concrete idea of what playing the game is going to be like, because we we haven't really gotten that yet. That's a good point, Jonathan. I mean, the, the list, the historical list of new IPs that have successfully launched in the fall it's not a long list like and 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 the generally the ones that have succeeded have had massive marketing budgets to help them. The two that come to mind are a game we were talking about earlier on the show, Assassin's Creed. First one did launch in the fall and that that ended up being a huge hit. And uh, Gears of War is is one on the Microsoft side that did debut uh, in the fall that was able to live on. But you're right. That's. It's it's probably better to just not be competing with the Modern Warfare 2s and the you know, let alone The Last of Us and God of War. Yeah. And then January is a time where, you know, Dying Light became a phenomenon with the original when it came out. Uh, franchises that were maybe niche, something like a Monster Hunter blew up with Monster Hunter yeah. World in January. It's a good month to try to really get excitement around a franchise new or or returning. And so I think it is a much better fit, whether or not Forspoken turns out to be a great game. T- totally still an unknown. We still really don't have a full concept of that game, but uh, yeah, hopefully we'll we'll get a better idea of that soon. Well, in any case, Forspoken moves to January and God of War Ragnarok has a November 9th release date. It's now the really big game of the fall, and I can't wait. I love the original, or the 2018 original. We have the results from last episode's poll. We asked, which game are you looking forward to most in 2023? Next year, and perhaps unsurprisingly, neck and neck with Spider-Man 2 and Starfield, right there, the two the two exclusives uh, will be sort of battling head-to-head. Starfield is going to be, I guess, Ryan, we can expect it in the first half of 2023. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, so so far, until we're told otherwise. Yeah, we'll see yeah. how much time uh, Todd Howard and the crew need. But, you know, my, my just gut says May on that, uh, which will still probably put it at least six months removed from Spider-Man. But yeah, next year, which we talked about, what, on last week's show, next year is going to be really, really fun for gamers yeah. of <laughs> regardless what, of what platform you're playing on. But Ryan, coming in way at the bottom of the list, only 2% of IGN's audience said that Redfall is the game that looks most looking forward to in 2023. I'm a little bit well, surprised. It's a, uh, a tough competition in that poll. And, you know, arcane games do have this historical tendency to be super critically acclaimed and and score well and beloved but they've they've kind of never been like the major mass market hit the way certainly spider-man was and and the bethesda game studios games have been so in in the context of this poll i'm not too surprised at that result but you know that's that's a game that uh is going to launch right into Game Pass, as all first-party Microsoft stuff does. And mm-hmm. I could see that one, if it turns out as as to live up to the pedigree of Arcane Games, could end up being one that has some serious word of mouth once it comes out. Yeah. And to be fair, the poll wasn't, are you looking forward to Redfall, yes or no? It was, right. which, one of these, <laughs> which one of these lists of games is the one you're most looking forward to? And Redfall got beat out by Starfield and Spider-Man 2. Not too surprising. Here is a poll for you to vote on for next week. We want to know what Ubisoft game are you most hoping to see in its showcase in September? Assassin's Creed Infinity, Avatar, Beyond Good and Evil 2? Make sure to vote at IGN.com and we'll share the results with you next week. And that's going to do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch. Thank you to Ryan and Jonathan. Thank you to Alan working behind the scenes through lots of technical difficulties before this taping uh, and finally persevering and getting the, getting the show made. My name is Damon. We'll be back next Friday, 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern with more PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news. We'll see you then.